just sunk straight down. Yeah, that happened. A little bit deeper, a little bit more muddy than I expected. I got water coming in. <laughs> How good is this? We're down on the west coast of Tasmania and I'm driving down a really deep and fast flowing river. Tough tracks, heaps of mud, heaps of clay. This is absolutely insane. And to make matters even more interesting, proper four wheel drive action style, I'm actually in three wheel drive because I broke a bunch of axle studs. I've certainly got my work cut out for me. But of course I didn't start right here in the middle of a river on the west coast of Tassie. You better buckle up, hold on to your couch because things are gonna get really wild on this trip. Let's get out of here. Our adventure begins down on the coast amidst the wind and waves of Granville Harbour. This is the west coast of Tassie at its absolute wildest. And we're gonna be tackling some serious challenges as we push up the coast to the heads of the Pyman River. Now you might remember that Graham broke his arm a while ago and is still recovering, so once again, Jocko has stolen the keys and he's wheeling his D-Max around Tassie. But don't worry Graham, I'm pretty sure that he'll keep it in good nick, mate. Hey Jocko, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, got you, mate. How yeah, are you finding the D-Max, mate? You're at home in that thing. I am, mate. It's actually kind of nice to have a comfortable vehicle to drive in with aircon and a radio that works. It's, oh, it's really good. I'm just trying my best to keep it nice and clean for Graham, although I don't think it's working that well. <laughs> no, mate, the smell's anything to go by, buddy. Look, mate, we're on the west coast of Tassie, and this is your first time down to the west coast. In my opinion, there's no better track to do than this Arthur Pyman region. I reckon it's probably the best taste of the west coast you could possibly get. Sounds good, mate, bring it on. Pretty soon the track is starting to get a bit more serious, so it's time to knock a bit of air out of the tyres. And joining us on this trip is our mate Kaido from Drifter Camping and Four Wheel Drive. Really in a trick looking 76 series complete with one of the best custom fit outs you'll ever see. Next up we've got Rob from Ultimate Diesel Tuning. The boys have tricked out their rig with a range of performance products and are putting out some serious power, but more on that later. Every convoy needs a practical joker and Stu from Wholesale Automatics is giving Jock a run for his money on this one, wheeling his usual weapon of choice, a GU Patrol fitted with a custom auto conversion. Rounding out the convoy is Dean from Goodyear Tyres, who's got a new set of 35 strapped to his dual cab that he's itching to test out in the tracks. Righto, that's enough of the introductions, let's get right into it. Here we go, bring it on, West Coast of Tassie. Here we go, bog hole time. The track up to the Pyman Heads hugs the coast and there are several beach sections to navigate. This is absolutely one of the more wild and spectacular bits of the coast you'll ever drive down, but you've got to keep your eyes open because the challenges are never too far away. Oh no! Hey <laughs> you and Sand mate, have another go. Righto, round two, second gear, good thanks, up we go. Easy done. Access up to the heads is dictated by the tides, and the next beach entry is already starting to disappear. We've got a long way to go, and waiting the tide out would cost us a whole day, so we're going to try and sneak through. The entry is getting completely submerged with each big wave, so timing this right is going to be critical. There's so much water in that right now, you wouldn't want to be getting your timing wrong or you're going to cop a lot of salt water. So I think the plan is to go down and try and straddle these rocks as best I can, and just try and pick a good gap. There's a bit of a lull between the bigger waves that lets us use this narrow channel to get through and jocks out the front keeping an eye on the next big wave will hit. Unfortunately, things don't go entirely to plan. Whoa! <laughs> we got waves? Oh no! Just hold up there. Sort of on the rocks a bit. Yeah. That was good timing, Jocko. Thanks for that, mate. Good spot. Yeah, no worries, <laughs> mate. Well, fair bit of salt water. It's a bit of a road boat anyway, so. Pays to get a good spotter though, and um, that time didn't quite have one. Oh. There we 
we go. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Salt water really is bad news for any vehicle, and the less of it you get up under the chassis, the better. So we'll try and get the rest of the boys through without a salt bath. We've clearly only got a small window between waves, though. That's what happened before, and then just a wave just came in and... Yeah, mate, but I'm a slightly better spotter than you, mate. Years of experience, hard-learned lessons. Didn't, I didn't say go, by the way. There's, there's a big wave coming. Go back. What, really? <laughs> I didn't say go. You said it was receding. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Slowly and steady, mate. That's your ticket. You just beat that wave in. Whoa, he's, he's giving it a bit. Whew. That was close. Just beat that wave. Look at that. Had it been another five seconds longer, we would have had water up the side of his vehicle. Look at this one coming through now. You can almost surf that one. Look at the water. Just ripping through there. You don't want that up the side of your vehicle. I mean, salt water and four wheel drives just should never be in the same sentence. It'll just eat all your electronics, your brakes will be buggered. It's just not good for a four wheel drive. Go now, you reckon? Yeah, I'll get ready to go after this one, mate. Very good, mate. Very good. Well done, mate. We've got the timing worked out now, and even with the tide pushing in, we're getting the boys through relatively unscathed. You got the big dry. Well, there you yep. go, all part of the fun of wheeling on the wild west coast. Don't forget, folks, if you do happen to get salt water on your Forby, easy done. Make sure you give it a That's really us. good underbody wash as soon as you get the chance, or it'll cost you later. One thing you've got to really be concerned about on some of these Tasmanian western beaches especially is quicksand. They get it down here quite a lot and um, some of these beaches are really quite remote. You come across a patch of quicksand, your vehicle will just sink straight down and you can lose it for good. So you really do have to be super careful when driving on the beach. Um, lucky for us, we've got quite the convoy. If we did get into trouble, we'd probably be able to recover the vehicle, but far out. It's just a wild place, this west coast. Speaking of wild, the challenges up ahead are going to provide the perfect chance to rinse off the Vorbies. Tasmania is famous for its bottomless black mud, and pretty soon the track is full of suspicious looking bog holes. Did, mate. Yes! Yahoo! Oh Ding dong lockers. Oh, that was gnarly. Lucky for us, this one has a pretty hard bottom, but up ahead, the bog holes start to look a lot more difficult, as Jocko soon discovers. I'm gonna go second gear. Just gonna ease into it and then try and power out of it. Here we go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm stuck. I am. <laughs> I'm stuck. Why didn't you get your winch rope out? Oh, sorry, mate. You can get that, big boy. There's always one mate who doesn't get their rope ready, but I have a feeling Jock might have stitched me up here. Uh, <laughs> wet socks. I did that on purpose. <laughs> and he knows as well. Now, there are very few anchor points around here, so I'm going to use sooty. It's not just convenient, it gives the perfect angle for a straight line pull out of the mud. Righto, Kaido, surely you can do better than Jocko. Watch this. <laughs> forward, mate, forward. Yeah, righto, so that, that didn't quite work. Right? <laughs> the good news is you're going to get like Jock getting in there. I reckon that's even better than driving it, because uh, if Jock gets wet socks, this, what a day. This plan backfired on me. <laughs> 
Is there like a hidden brick wall or something in here? Far out. Yep, that's Tazzy for you, mate. Here, Jocko, let me give you a hand. <laughs> what? <laughs> Now the 76 is heavier than the D-Max, so we've got to attach the D-Max to Sooty to make a solid anchor point. Tracks like this, it really pays to have a decent sized convoy. Look at the suction of that mud, this place is absolutely wild. What's your plan of attack mate? Oh sugar. Oh nice one mate. Just drive it! So Dane, plan of attack mate, um, how are you going to tackle this one? I think we might just go in a little bit harder. A little bit harder, that's always... <laughs> well, I, I usually I find it the same train of thought. That's a good one here. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. yeah. Phew. Well, that's one bog hole done, but the next one is looking pretty sinister. Now, of course, Jock's the taller, so it's only fair that we send him in for a recce. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a no-go. But the so-called dry lines around it aren't looking that easy either. This is black soil country, and that means that once a few vehicles go through, the line can quickly become a mud trap. Doesn't look like a lot of good options here. Looks very, very muddy, and it's like tazzy black soil country, you know? You get stuck in this stuff, it just goes straight down to the chassis. Yeah, there's about... 15 different ways, that one's way too deep. I think this is the best option. Just give this a bit of a go. I really don't want to get stuck there, there's absolutely nothing to winch off. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> she just nearly went sideways. I nearly took out a cameraman. How to kill the camera crew, 101. <laughs> Oh wow, nearly got him. I nearly killed a cameraman. Alrighty, let's see how this goes. Ooh, that's a bouncy little exit. Come on! Yeah! You beauty! How good is that, eh? You gave that a red hot go. Mud flicking out of the tyres. Not bad, not bad. Tessie mud flicking. Mud flicking, I reckon there's gonna be a lot of this coming up too. So. Right, Okaido, show us what you got, mate. All right. Let's see how we go here. He's not gonna hang around. Oh. It's all right, you got this. No, you don't. You nearly had this. Would you have a look at that? The mud has just eaten up the 76. I reckon the low spring hangers on the rear of the vehicle are probably catching it in the mud. So if we can get a bit more clearance under there, we should be right. I think it's time to bring out the Max Tracks. Now, these bad boys come with a handy little lanyard, which is worth attaching as it makes it easier to find them once they're buried in sand or mud. Go, 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 go. That's it, that's it, keep going, stop. What's happening, as soon as he's getting off the Max Tracks, he's going back down to those ruts and those spring hangers are getting caught on the mud. It doesn't really matter because the max tracks, you just keep getting them back out, putting them in front of the tyres, and you go again. You might only make a metre or two at a time, but um, progress is progress. You know it, you know it, you know it, you know it. It actually only takes a few attempts before Kaido's back under his own steam. Easy done. How good's that when a plan works? Now we've got the job of cleaning the mud out of the max tracks. Luckily, there's no shortage of bog holes around here to straight down into the. Look at that one. <laughs> oh, gee. That's full on. All right, it looks bigger ruts than there was before. I reckon you got this, I'm, I'm confident. All right, I'll bring her out. Let's go. <laughs> That's it, into it, into it, into it, into it. That's it, into it, go back off. That's it, That's it. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. Thanks very much. Sounds so good too. Oh, like, oh, on, on small. All right, let's see if Stu can pull one out of the bag again. Into it. <laughs> nope, he's down. Just touching the snatch strap up the ultimate diesel vehicle. It's got a stack of power, and we'll need every ounce of it because 
Stu's really stuck. And he's at the start of the bog hole too, so there's a lot of, we need a lot of pulling power. So we'll get this all done up. So all the way up with the shackle, then half a turn back. So we'll be able to undo it later. We'll see how far we need to go backwards. A snatch strap is great in this situation. It acts as a giant rubber band using kinetic energy to help clear the stuck vehicle out of the mud. And look at that, it's worked like a charm. Nice one, boys. Hey, Rob, you got a copy, mate? Got a copy, Sean. You've obviously got a tune in that thing. It goes way too good for it to be stock. Nah, Sean, it's uh, it's got our new developed high flow turbo upgrade. It's got the PWR front mount intercooler on it. It's got a catch can, it's got an exhaust system, and it's got a custom tune. It's pumping out about 580 newton meters at the rear wheels and just over 150 kilowatts of the wheels. So it certainly gets along nice, mate. That's a huge improvement, massive massive upgrade in power. You guys do a lot of different um, upgrades for all the different models of um, and utes and four-wheel drives out there. What can someone expect if they, if they just wanted to get a bit of a tickle on their vehicle, make it go a little bit better, what would you uh, recommend? Oh, Sean, I think value for money, just doing a custom dyno tune on a vehicle, just tidying up that throttle response. You usually see about 25% gain in torque on average, making it drive a little better off the line, getting that low down torque, is absolutely the best value for dollars you can get, mate. And obviously, if you want to go a little bit further and really see the full potential of your of your vehicle, you guys um, offer the next stage, which is um, upgraded turbo, inner cooler, and obviously a tune. So this is what we call our ultimate torque pack, which goes into the, the Hiluxes, Rangers, BT50s, and we've just released the 70 series, mate, which we'll have to get yours in. All right, mate, that sounds good. Uh, let's get into it. There's plenty more mud puddles coming up ahead. And sure enough, the next one is just around the bend. All right, it's one of those classic Tasmanian choose your own adventures. We've got big bog hole. One looks really gross. That one looks undrivable. You just never know. Easy done, easy done. Just about picking the line. I reckon if you got it wrong in some of these bog holes, the water would be over your roof. Some of them are so deep. Picking a line is important, but sometimes going first is also an advantage. Yeah, I kicked it. <laughs> Bad luck, Jocko. I'll tell you what, I bet Groan would love to know how you're taking care of the D-Max right now. Mate. Oh, Jocko, couldn't oh, help myself. No. I got on the phone to Graham. No. He wants to know how bad it's bogged. Look. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Let, let, let me, let me, look, Jock's out of words, mate. He's got mud all over the D-Max, all over the bonnet. It's made it right up onto the canopy. Yeah, the canopy's filthy. Oh, I'm sorry, Graham. <laughs> and look at his grubby little hands. I guarantee everything inside the canopy's gonna be grubby too, mate. Yes. <laughs> Graham's not laughing as much as me, though. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Jocko, you owe him a case of beer, he reckons. Oh, I'm trying to keep it clean, but like, it's... <laughs> Look it's going to cost him about $400 at Car Lovers, I reckon, to I get this thing so. clean. Yep. All right, mate, well, we better get this thing out of the mud because um, <laughs> it's going to start sprouting soon because rain, mud. All right. All right, speak soon. Sorry, Graham. He's stoked. Oh, I bet. Jocko's done a good job here of not burying the D-Max in too deep. So we're going to opt for the winch over a snatch strap to get him out of trouble. All right, Kaido. Mate. Do you reckon you got one out of three in you? Mate, I just knew you were going to say that. I'm, all I'm going to say is this is redemption round and I'm, I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to show you how it's done. Watch. Ooh, ooh. I like that attitude, mate. That's a can-do attitude. Let's see if you can do it. Second. Big mud. That Tassie mud, eh? It's a bit different from the mud in Gloucester. It's exactly where I got stuck too. There's always oh, round four. None that's exactly four. right. That's exactly right. What do you reckon? Do you, do you can if I come down and snatch up? That mud is just getting deeper and deeper, but at the same time, we don't want to open up more ruts on the track, so we're just going to keep pushing through the best we can. The back end of the 76 is deep in the mud though, so I'm going back to the snatch strap to pull him up and out. Okay, take one. We've got some movement, but this is going to need a few more cracks. Ah, oh, 
so close. One more go, and I reckon we should have this. This will be it. Yes, got him out. That's the go, Sooty. Well, that's the four we's well and truly christened, and we've still got more vehicles to get across this mud. Take it away, Stu. That's the go, mate. Well done. Oh, I thought you had that one, mate. Ah, damn it. That's good. I think I'm proper stuck. That's actually a really good effort by Stu. He's cleared the worst of the mud, and I reckon a quick snatch will have him out. Well, that'll do you. Well, mate, I reckon that's the key. In this sort of situation, if you do get stuck, don't bury those yeah, tyres down too much, because otherwise it's going to make the recovery a lot harder, not to mention a little bit more dangerous. I think that's the key, though, with snatching, to make it really safe. A lot of people think you've just got, you've got one go to do it, and if you don't do yeah. it in one go, you can't. I like to just take up the tension, just see how stuck they are, yeah. and then you can always work up on that. And you just, can feel it too. If, if they're really stuck, then give it a bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Only as much as you need. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. All right, how do you reckon he's going to do? I reckon he'll nail it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I reckon so. It's got a bit of power. It's a bit wider, so it won't yeah. fit in our tracks, which is cool for it. Yeah. And uh, also the clear, it's got 35s on it, so. True, yeah. Well, we'll see. All right, little little bit of advice, and you, you know this yourself. Don't back off, just get right into it. I'm gonna put those 35s at full speed. Beauty, mate. All right, when you're ready. Into it. Woo! That's it, that's it. Nailed it. Make Absolutely it a look easy, <laughs> easy. That's the difference, 35s versus 33s, you've seen it. That's the proof's in the pudding there. Just stayed out of those ruts a bit and just easy, mate. I don't think we're done yet. Tassie tracks can be a lot of fun, but as you've seen, they can be pretty challenging. If you do venture out this way, my advice is to stick to the main track wherever possible, travel in a decent sized convoy, and as I mentioned, when you do get stuck, get off the loud pedal and opt for the recovery gear. Whatever you do, don't go cutting new tracks through the bush to avoid the mud, because that's how tracks like this get closed, and that would be an absolute tragedy. It's getting late in the day, and we finally make it back towards the coast, and in the distance, we catch our first glimpse of the mouth of the Pyman River. This is such a stunning part of the world to wheel in, and it makes the challenge of getting here all the more worthwhile. Oh my God, that view, holy heck. That is insane. Look at it. Look at that. Spectacular. I think you'll agree when you see what I'm looking at. Some of the most scenic tracks in Australia, full stop. Now, come on, folks. Is this place on your bucket list or what? Hit the like button if you agree. Right by the mouth of the river is a gem of a campsite tucked away in the dunes right next to the beach. Even in summer, you've got to be prepared for all sorts of weather, and you want to bring everything from board shorts to your best winter gear. And camping is a bit the same. It pays to be well set up with protection from the elements. Speaking of, the boys have soon got their best camp setups well underway. Jock is absolutely loving the new canopy from Mitt's Alloy, and seems to have found how to operate all the buttons and features of Graham's new Pride and Joy. A really mint setup, mate. I'm gonna be cooking up a storm tonight for the boys and I've got this super handy storage spot for my kitchen table, thanks to the guys at Drifter. Well, what an incredible first day out in the tracks. With camp set up done, it's time to sit back and relax, crack a cold iron jack and just soak it all in. But get ready folks, because there's a storm on the way. That's right, my cooking that is. Yeah, how good is this, eh? What a campsite on the wild west coast of Tasmania, the Arthur Pyman region. You've got the river just down there. you got, you got some... I didn't know what was happening then. You came in real hot. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just so cold. I'm trying to keep warm. I know. It is a bit cold. We're in the middle of summer, mind you. What time does it get dark in Tasmania? Oh, like 10? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's really late. So if you, if you want to do a meal in Tassie, I suggest it's a quick meal. Have you ever had two-minute noodles before? I have. Do you know how to cook those? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, luckily I do, mate. And um, this one's a, a bit of a variation on two minute noodles. Mm -hmm. It's 10 minute noodles. Think about it, it's five times better than two minute noodles, right? Two, yeah, okay. correct. Yep. Yeah, the maths yep. works yep. out. Yep. That's what I'm doing tonight. So okay. it's a fancy noodles. And what's so good about this is a really cheap meal. It's easy to make. I've got about two onions diced up. Straight in, look at that noise. That noise lets you know you're on. So I've got some bacon, some garlic. garlic. Bacon. That's chili. Here we go. Well, that's a lot of chili. That's the whole chili. That's all the chilies. How much garlic are we talking yeah, about? Fair bit, fair bit, yeah, fair bit. Fair bit. Fair bit in there. Yeah, right. Fair bit in there, mate. Well, yeah, not that much. Oh, sorry. Too much. Too much garlic. <laughs> oh, that's most of it. I'm going to go straight for the bacon because mm -hmm. if, you're you bring, want... if you're bringing bacon out, look, that's not really an Asian thing. No, but I saw it in the fridge and I was like, can we put that in? Well, it's a good idea, actually. At the moment, you'd be thinking, there's nothing Asian about this. And not yet, not yet, but give us some time. How sharp is that, mate? How sharp is that? Very yeah. sharp. The old Victorian ox knife, mate. That is super sharp. It's always Ooh, good yeah, to have... I shouldn't even touch no, it. No, you shouldn't touch that, mate. Get an adult at all times <laughs> when you're doing this sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Put all that Speaking in. Speaking of adults. Put all that in. Now's the bit where I get a bit excited. I, I start to get a little bit, a little bit gourmet, Ooh. to be honest with you. And I'm going to throw some sauces in. Sesame seed oil. How much of that are we talking? Oh, it was about eight of those. Yeah, ten eight, of, eight ten. of the shakes. So this is a bit yeah, of uh, soy there. sauce, a bit Make of a dark soy. Oh, Tabasco, I just found that. Yep, That's not that really in. Asian. Oyster sauce. We're gonna have to oh, <laughs> be careful, mate. Couple of slaps of that one, is that Probably a... <laughs> <laughs> two and a half. All right, a bit of hoist in. It's about trying to judge the, the flavors. You'd be better at this than me, to be honest with you. Yeah. You gotta shake it a bit. Shake it. That's it. Look at that. There's a lot. Too much. It's too, too much. much. That's I'm too sorry. much. You've really gone. I've gone over. Well, there's a lot of soy sauce in there. That's looking absolutely awesome, and it smells even better, mate. That, it does. That's the smell you want. I right. actually don't know what smell you want, but that smells good. <laughs> that that is about right. This is where it all turns to magic. Probably that much. Mm -hmm. Seems better. like a lot of water to put in the meal. It right? is a lot of water. But I'm putting the noodles straight in ah. there. So I'm cooking the I'm cooking the noodles, and and to show you how gourmet this meal is, three minute noodles, like proper three minute noodles. Ah. These are way better. I'm just going to chuck them straight, straight in. And now this is where it gets exciting because the noodles cook in that water. The starch oh. that is released out of the noodles will actually thicken the sauce. Well, that's very technical. Mm. Exactly right, mate. Not as a pretty face. Yeah. Might need more water. <laughs> What's funny about that, mate? I couldn't get the cab off. <laughs> that was the best of us, mate. Don't worry about that. That's quite a spray, mate. What are you doing? What Sorry, are you doing? Man, I slipped. That's quite a spray. Can't really aim. Give that two minutes. Flip the noodles. They'll start to break up. Mm -hmm. Stir it all through. It'll um, actually, after three minutes, just read the packet. It, yeah, three minutes. We're on. We're on. Yeah. yeah. So, so while it's while it's doing that, yep. I'm actually going to pull those those shallots out of the out of the fridge. Yep. And they go right in at the end. Mm -hmm. That's how you make a gourmet. Yep. So little gourmet touches like that. With mate. a tea. Little touches like that. Every bloke, every woman has one recipe that mm -hmm. they would cook around the campfire. Yep. What is your go-to? What is your go-to recipe around the campfire? I'd love to know. Put in the comments below because we we check the comments out and um, to be honest, it'll. Uh, be a lot of inspiration. Yeah, I might get a few tips from it as well. It was like, yeah. mate, as, as, a, as a cook, you make a fantastic four-wheel driver. You, you really do. Thanks, mate, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been good having you on this trip. You're, um, you're like Graham, but just not quite as good. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, what's it like actually looking up to someone for one? You're not that, you are a fair bit taller. Yeah, There's well, the no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Alpha male is thrown around a lot <laughs> these days on the track. Here we go. What I'm gonna do that, with that now, I'm gonna add it. Big old handful of these in. Well, look at this one. You didn't cut this one, that, did you? Okay, look at that. Ignore that. <laughs> Throw that out. Like, you might not know the recipes and the, the technicalities behind cooking food, but you can toss a pot of beef, <laughs> can't you? You can throw some meat around. Okay, good, on you. good on you. That's good. That's fantastic. I mean, like, you're by my side training me, showing me what to do, so. Oh, I'm just watching. I'm mean, in awe, <laughs> if anything. Mate, that's Mate, looking, looking so good. good. Smelling even better. I know. Tell you what, boys, gather around and, um, just do me first. If you, yeah, if you, if you I'll mind. do you, mate. Put a little yeah. bit in that. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Yum, yum, yeah. yum. Come here, Boys, yep. don't and, forget and to sprinkle it from a height. It helps. Oh, wait till you, you taste it. He's onto it. He's onto it. 
This is amazing, mate. This is the sort of meal you need on the west coast of Tassie. Mm. But a big day tomorrow, boys. We've got a lot of tracks. Look, the boys are quiet. That, that's always a good sign. Where can we go, grab an iron jack? Yep. Sit around the fire. I've got one here. Mate, 10 minute meal. That is mm. sensational. Did you learn how to make it? Did you take notes? I don't remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Had like five ingredients, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's go sit right down the fire. Good. That's what camping is all about. Good food, good mates, and some good tales by the fire. Two out of three ain't bad, I suppose. Mate, coming up, one of my favourite times of the year, we're starting the show circuit with... Absolutely, mate, the National 4x4 Outdoor Show, Fishing and Boating Expo down in Brisbane. Now, yep. one of my favourite shows of the year, and yep. this year it's going to be bigger and better than ever, isn't it, mate? Huge. I've heard that we've got uh, everyone from the industry is coming. What I especially like is we're taking Snatch on the road again. That's a huge hit. And we're going to be inside this year. It's going yep. to be massive in there. We've got heaps of discounts, plus a new Queenslander t-shirt that Ooh, you just heard yes. here for the first time. Yes. It's coming out. It's going to be red hot. I hope you haven't ordered many of them because you're not going to sell many. <laughs> but we also know that uh, you're going to be bringing a couple of your vehicles down. Exactly right, mate. I'm going to have the 79 series down there yep. and the Dirty 30. Now that's going to be all done, registered and ready to rumble. So I, you'll get to I see like, it down there. What I like about that plan is you can use a 79 to tow the Dirty 30 down there. <laughs> I want to save you a bit of money, folks, and to do that, go to the website, use the code word ACTION at checkout, save some coin. Where do you spend that coin? Mate, just down at the full drive show, because that's where we're going to have all the bargains this year. If you're into anything full yep. driving, camping, fishing, or even boating related, get on down there. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be an absolutely cracking show. And uh, speaking of cracking shows, mate, why don't we get back to the action and see <laughs> where we left off. Forbies are showing a few battle scars this morning and the boys are looking a little bit rough too after a massive first day on the tracks. Everyone's going to need to get some coffee into them though as we've got an even bigger day planned ahead. We'll be tackling the coastal route back to Granville Harbour and then heading inland to the forest around Montezuma Falls. First though, we better take a few moments to appreciate this wild bit of coast. Oh yeah, this is one of the most beautiful places I think I've ever camped at mate. It's just Rugged, that's what's so cool about it. And all these logs everywhere. What do you reckon that was back from the logging days? Absolutely, like absolutely. There's, there's hundreds of logs down this beach. I reckon they would have used this a bit of a, they float them down, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Log this sort of area, float them all down. I just love it's that crazy. we're camping just over there and you walk onto the beach and there's just a massive part of history just lying here. It's it's so remote, this area though. That's the thing about this west coast of Tassie. You don't think Tassie's that remote because it's a little island, but we're, we're really remote here, this yeah, is so beautiful. Well, I reckon, mate, we get back down to camp. Kaido, ah, he's got a pretty fast setup, mate. This morning, is he? Yeah, Ooh. I gave him a little nudge yep. before we came down for a walk. He should have Brecky on the boil, I reckon. All right, well, let's go see what he's up to. Sounds good, mate. Sure enough, back at camp, Kaido's got the kitchen in full swing. Mate, something smells good. What do you yeah. got going on here? Uh, we're doing an yeah. omelette here. Omelettes? Yep. What a Brecky for a big day, eh? Yeah. Your setup, mate, just... It's absolutely mind blowing. This is the Snow Peak IGT, right? Yep, yep, all incorporated into the drawers. It's modular, obviously. Yep. And you can customize this to suit what you want. So, yep. So, this is the mainframe here. Yeah. Uh, this is what we've got our stove in. Now, this stove and these infills can come straight out. You can chuck a chopping board in there, uh, a charcoal cooker, hundreds of different products that can go in there. Then, we've got the extension bench here, which uh, it goes in uh, on top of the drawers here. And the other thing is, too. We've got mounts on the end here, so you can chuck another extension bench on the end of this, going. or you can chuck a 90 degree bench. So Far it's out. really endless what you can do with this. You it's make it suit just your the needs. amount of, uh, of uh, benches you can fit in the drawers. So That's what's cool about it though. You've integrated this setup into your drawers. So yep. when it comes to packing this away, these just slide straight in there. Yep. You, you don't even realize yep. you've got them. So because we custom make all our drawers, uh, we can make this to suit whatever style you want. So mate, this is obviously a custom setup. You've yep, built absolutely. this design in exactly what you guys yep. want, yep. but you obviously do you know, um, standard sort of setups as well, which yeah, is absolutely. like one size fits all. So if yep. you've got like a 200 series or something like that, you could just order a set of drawers that fits perfectly. Yep. Just go straight in, a few mounts in there, and you're done. You got your drawer set up already ready to go. Ready so. to go. All right, I'll well, let you get that on the boil. I'm going to bring a plate over. So right I reckon on. that's too much for you to eat alone. Right and um, I reckon we get into it, eh? <laughs> Sounds good. All right, cool. The Pyman Heads is a perfect spot to set up for a few days as a base to explore the area. But of course, we've got more tracks to tackle, so we're going to pack up camp. Even though the weather in Tassie can be a bit cold and wet at the best of times, it really is one of our favourite places to camp in Australia. There's so many free campsites hidden away in pristine places just like this, and even on the weekend, you can usually get a campsite all to yourself. How good's that? 
Look at old Sooty, I think it's just about as muddy as all the vehicles. And uh, look, one thing I like about the Raptor Cody on here, when it does come to time of cleaning it, let's face it, I don't clean it that much, but it actually does scrub up okay. Give it a bit of water, a bit of soap, give it a clean, and have a look at that. It actually cleans up probably a lot easier than normal paintwork. That's one of the advantages I like. If you've got a four-wheel drive that's used a lot to get out and this sort of stuff, gets covered with mud every weekend, you know, you go down tight tracks where you've got to scratch it a heck of a lot. The Raptor coating protects it really well, and um, if you do decide to clean it up, well, it cleans up pretty easy. Just five minutes from camp, we've hit our first bog hole. Here we go. Phew! Whoa! Going everywhere. I was mad. The route we're taking today hugs the coast and then takes in some amazing rocky coastline. But you've got to keep an eye on the tracks because there's plenty of challenges to keep you busy. Picking the right line through the many bog holes on the track can be a bit of a challenge, and sometimes it doesn't go to plan. Oh, you just sunk straight down. Yeah, that happened. A little bit deeper, a little bit more muddy than I expected. Got water inside the vehicle. Tassie mud, it's the best. That real thick just stuff, that really it. goopy sort of stuff that just finds its way into everything. <laughs> 80 series door sills aren't exactly the best when they're about 30 years old. So the boys are hustling to get Sooty hooked up and out of trouble. Here we go. Would you look at that mud? It smells a bit average. Beautiful. Well, the good news is that I'll get to take home a part of Tasmania. That'll be in the car for the rest of time. So wherever I go, Tassie's with me. Oh, damn my boot. After all that. Oh, no. <laughs> good way to clean the carpets, though. Well, windows are going up and going up slightly different line. Yep, that line's heaps better. The joys of going first, eh? All right, I'm gonna go through the same way Sean just did, and I'm not gonna hold back. Let's go, get into it, come on. I'm glad Sean drove through that right side first so I can see which way not to go. Even with the better line, these bog holes need a fair bit of momentum to get through, but the rest of the convoy makes it through no dramas. That was it! Hey! <laughs> With that, we're back onto the beach and en route to Granville Harbour, where we'll pump up the tyres and get ready for our next destination inland. How good's that Pyman's track? It never fails to disappoint. Thought I'd take a second to um, pop the bonnet, have a quick look inside, and just go over it, because I've done a lot of mud work, and I want to see where that mud's gotten to. Firstly, I'm looking at the alternator. There's a fair bit of mud in that, and I'm also looking at the radiator to see how much mud's got stuck in the radiator. I think I've got off pretty lightly, to be honest with you, but one of the things when you do a lot of mud work, mud will clog your radiator up, and then you go to drive on the highway or something like that, your vehicles start overheating or not working properly. It's a really good idea. While that mud is still nice and wet, like it is now, is get a hose in, clean the radiator, clean your alternator and all things like that. And just a quick, I, I usually go a quick clean right through the engine bay here as well at the same time. Well, the boys are airing up and um, I'm going to do the same because we've got a little bit of highway driving before we get down to the next location. And trust me when I say this one is going to be off tap. It's going to be a lot more enclosed, plenty of mud, plenty of tough four wheel driving. I can't wait. 
After a few k's in the blacktop, we arrive into the deep forest on the way to Montezuma Falls. Hey Jocko, you copy mate? Yeah, got you mate. That's a go. How's the terrain difference? On this track here, this is the Ring uh, River track, and I'll tell you what, it's just like real jungle dense, heaps of mud. A bit different from the coast, eh mate? That's one of the things I'm loving about Tassie is you drive almost like a kilometre in one direction and the terrain completely changes and now we're just in some dense rainforest. I reckon we're going to have a bit of a tough time mate. It's been raining a fair bit so these tracks I don't reckon are going to give us heaps of grip. Yeah, you're not wrong, you're not wrong. Fortunately there's a couple of uh, vehicles in the convoy with plenty of power so I imagine these play hills won't be too much trouble but we'll find out I reckon. Either way mate, she's going to be fun. Will you lead the way mate, let's uh, get into it. The water is everywhere as you head deeper into the forest. And if the descent is this slippery, then just imagine the climbs out on the other side. They're going to be nothing short of hectic. It wouldn't be Tasmania without a nasty bog hole around every bend, and this one looks like an absolute doozy. Alright, here we go. Whoa. Might need to go in a little bit quicker than that. A little bit sticky. I'm giving it a real nudge, but this bog just doesn't seem to want to let me out. Back then, down short. <coughs> Sooty. Go from there. After a few more attempts, I've got the feeling there might be something going on the front end of Sooty that's holding me up. Is that one spinning? No. Nah. Yeah, get that drive on it. Is the locker in? Yeah. Yeah, the hub's just turning. Serious? Yeah. It's a shame. That's yep. a shame. Three wheel drive action. <laughs> um, I might just run a winch then. Yep, Cubby, we'll get some gear. It's a bit of a mission to find a suitable winch anchor point, but soon we've got Sooty hooked up and winching out of trouble. Time to take a closer look at this hub. It's pretty obviously the problem. They're not supposed to spin like that. And um, you engage it, the problem is, you engage it. It gets slightly better, it does lock, but then the torque will just spin this thing anyway because it's not actually bolted in with any of these bolts. They've all snapped, so I'm going to have to run around in uh, two-wheel drive essentially, but because i got lockers, I can go to three-wheel drive, which is well, it's better than nothing anyway. Should get me through. We'll be all right. I'll have to fix that when we get back into town. Sean didn't make it through that bog hole, which, you know, I don't have 35s. I do have a rear locker, but it's not working. It hasn't been working most of the trip, so... Um, I'm pretty much unlocked in the, in the rear, but I'll give it a go anyway. There's quite a drop in the start of this challenge, so you can't enter it with too much speed. Oh. And as it turns out, the bog hole is a perfect fit for a D-Max. That's you, mate. Out with the winch. I'm sitting very deep in mud. I do not want to get mud in Graham's D-Max. Look at that. Jocko's found a memento for Graham. Have a go at that. There you go, that was a quick recovery from the boys. So I didn't get any water in the cab, which is good. Different line, slightly different line. Give it more though. Ah, he's belly down, oh, eh? Well, to be honest, I thought Kaido would have had that. This bog hole is proving to be quite a challenge. Just thought I'd come down and check these boxes because I was fully underwater back there and I keep all my recovery gear in here and there's not even a drop of water inside which gives you an idea of how good these seals are. You can see where the mud finishes on the seal which means no water's getting in. Got to be happy with that. Rob's seen what happened to the rest of us and he's getting the recovery gear out and ready. Yeah, get into it mate. Good luck. More revs. That's better, I know it. No drop. Well, that's a pretty good effort. You got that front up, which is um, half the work done. I think you did the right thing by just not giving it too much. That's where you tend to break CVs. If you're trying to get into it really hard, it's that shock load when the front tire spins, then grips, and an IPS vehicle that will break those CVs. In this case, just a quick winch. 
and he'll be out on his way. Yep, that'll be out. Thanks, Scotto. Good approach, mate. Good approach. Yeah, that's the line. Oh. Yep, yep. Speedo still on his floor. You got it. Yep, yep. Oh, oh so close. That's all right for three cylinders, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Dean's giving it a real crack, but once again, the mud wins and it's out with the winch. Uh, I shouldn't put this away because I might need it again. The Dominator Extreme has been in the front of my vehicle for about 18 months now. And I'll tell you what, it has saved my bacon a number of times. And now in three-wheel drive, I reckon I'm going to be relying on this winch to get myself out of strife on this track because I reckon, just by judging how much clay and how much rain we've got now, it's going to be one heck of a drive. Now, all the boys are using their winches, and it just goes to really reinforce that whenever you come out bush in a place like this, you need to be self-sufficient. You need to have yourself a working winch and a good quality one at that. And um, like I said, I've been running the Dominator Extreme for some time now. It's never let me down. And um, I reckon today I'm going to give it another bite in because I want to get this 80 series out in three-wheel drive. I reckon I'm going to have to drive hard, the winch even harder. Yeah, check this out, mate. This is a pretty gnarly uh, water crossing and you've actually got to drive down the creek. It's, um, it's a bit of a doozy. That's good because I guess we'll get a free car wash out of it at least. Yeah, have a go at this, hey. Cruising down a really deep, fast flowing creek or river. Yeah, a few big rocks down the bottom here, boys. You're gonna love this one. Yeah, mate, this is absolutely awesome. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, good is it, hey, when you've got to drive down a river to um, get to the other side of the track. Check out the mud trail you leave behind when you drive in. Jocko, you were spot on, mate. This is a free car wash. Yeah, this is sick. What goes down usually goes up again. And up next, we're into some tough little climbs. Just, just. I reckon that was all tyres in that. Ooh, that is a big climb. Jocko's loving the new D-Max setup, and I reckon the new fulcrum suspension fitted underneath is having a big impact. Those shocks have been designed specifically to handle the extra weight in the rear, and it shows the D-Max is just eating up these climbs. Come on, new beauty, we're up, yoo What a drive. It's just super slippery clay. Usually the first vehicle gets the best chance this stuff. The top sort of gets taken off. Jocko was into that, and he drove that really well. That's a good drive. This is Kaido's first trip to Tassie, and I can tell you he's having an absolute blast. And the 76 seems to be absolutely loving it too. Rob's making good use of all that extra power, and he's up and over that section of climb with ease. Those nice big rock step they've got here for me. Hmm. I'm put the front locker on for that. Even though he's in a heavy old rig, that auto conversion really lets Stu drive in a controlled fashion. And after a few goes, he finds the right momentum to take him over the rock step. Right, mate. More pedal. Up next is this treacherous clay climb. The traction here is going to be pretty much non-existent. Definitely a challenge in three-wheel drive. All right, Jocko, this one um, looks pretty slippery, mate. Lots of clay. Let's give it a little bit of space. I'll go up first, just in case it comes sliding back at a rate of knots. Tangled up, mate. A bit, a bit of sideways action. All right, one more go. Oh, I'm sliding back. Not fast enough. Right, I'm sliding. Whoa, that's slippery. I've got to come back. I've got to get a bit more uh, momentum. That's going to be my friend here, I reckon. The issue here, of course, is that with each pass, the clay gets that little bit slicker. I'm going to reverse back as far as I can and try and get up in one motion. Here we go.
I got nothing, man. This is slippery. Full wheel drive would be helpful, but uh, even then, I reckon it's just the clay is just wild. Yeah, right. Do you want me to come up with uh, some recovery gear? Yeah, copy, mate. The boys jump to it and soon have got the winch in free spool and are looking for an anchor point. But on this climb, the best anchor is a long way up, so we're going to run out of rope quite quickly. So one of the things when you're spooling out a winch rope is you never want to get too much off the drum, otherwise it can start spinning and the rope actually won't bind on itself and pull in. So it's good to leave at least one full wrap. Um, in this case, we've left a little bit more than that just to be safe. So one of the boys is going to grab a winch extension strap and we're going to use that essentially as a big tree trunk protector to winch off that. Passing the winch extension strap through itself is a good way to double its length, and it's given us enough to get the winch attached. This clay can be pretty deceptive. You think you've got traction, but then it just disappears again and slides you offline. We've got to reset the winch to get me to the top, but at last I've made it over this climb. Well, that was a big winch. Just lost momentum couldn't get it back and that track as soon as it gets a couple of tyres on it <laughs> it's just that red clay gets so slippery I reckon the boys are going to have their work cut out even in four-wheel drive I reckon it's going to be real hard far out if you're a connoisseur of the mud well come in Tassie because you're going to see every type of it and you're going to get bogged in every type of mud as well. Insane. All right Jocko, what have you got mate? The bottom section is quite flat so I'm actually going to try and stay out of the ruts if I can because they're just like big racing slick tracks so I'm going to try and keep some steady momentum on the high side and try not to slip in and then cross over up the top. That's a great plan in theory but this mud has other ideas. Oh no! Damn it that didn't work. Right. My plan didn't work, so now I'm in the ruts. I'm not going to get out of them. So I think I'm just going to have to uh, put the old right boot down and uh, give it a go. Come on. Oh. Close. Copy that. Good effort. Big fella. Thanks, mate. Uh, let's uh, give it a winch, I reckon. Have a go at this, this track is so slippery, you can't even get traction to walk up here. That red clay, as soon as it gets moist, then gets a couple of tyres on it. Absolutely insane. So I reckon a lot of the boys have got the fate of this winching because look at it. It doesn't stop here, it just keeps going up and around the corner too. Tasmania, you muddy place, I love it. It's a long, hard winch up this climb, and once again, we've got to reset the winch to go again and get the D-Max up to the next spot where there's enough traction so Jocko can give it another go. Don't hold back, Santa, big fella. That's it, that's, that's it. Yoo-hoo! Ooh, that's slippery up the top too. Good job, D-Max. That's how to do it. Get those tyres spinning, don't hold back. Well done, mate. Good drive, mate, good drive. Already lifting wheels. Now Kaido's got a point to prove after a tough day yesterday in the mud. Unleash that big V8, mate. For it, Here it, into it. Don't stop, into it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well done. What a Exactly right, he needed that one too. Pido, oh, you madman, you madman, mate. Like that was an insane drive. drive. Tell you it. what, Jock's shaking at the knees, that sound. <laughs> Holy heck. Yeah. Ah, the cruise is back. We're back <laughs> in it, let's go. Redemption cool. Hill, he's back. <laughs> he's back. I want to hear this Hilux. Well, that's a hard act to follow, but I reckon Rob will give this a red hot go. Rob's almost over the lip, but that edge has just spat the front of the car into the bush. Go back and right hand down. Take two, and the same thing happened. Left, left, left. You need to steer left as you come up. All right, mate, third time's a charm. Yeah, yeah. 
That thing's got some power. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's insane. Insane. Chew's up next, mate. He's going to have to control of the auto. Bruce yeah. will be on tap from low RPM with that auto, and um, I just reckon he's going, to, he's going to send it. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Uh oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. He's coming up. He's coming up. That's it. Ah, oh, so close. That's one heck of a drive, but the weight in the back of the patrol just held Stu back. Yeah, right. Wait, Jack. I'll go another go. Stu's not one to give up easily, but this yeah, is a fair know. old task yeah. for the big rig. He's up and over the lip. Well done, mate. That's it, you know it. You! That little right turn at the end, yeah, mate. Yeah, as soon as you do that. <laughs> <laughs> the for me. That little right hand turn at the end, just as he popped up and then hard left hand down. Got him up there. Well, Dino's up next, and I'll tell you what, he's got a very capable vehicle. It doesn't have a front locker like some of the other vehicles in the convoy, but he's here to test tyres. A track like this is going to test tyres. What he's looking for essentially is enough momentum to get up here, but also keep into enough so it flicks mud out of the side grips of those tyres. And as soon as you start to clear the tread of it, and those self-cleaning properties of a mud tyre, when they're good, will actually clear the mud out, get you more grip, and help him get further up this track. So that's the theory anyway. Let's bring him up and see if that works out. All right, mate, I think you're ready. Well done, mate. Whoa, he was okay. not holding back. He did not hold back. There was mud flicking everywhere. What a drive. <laughs> he yeah, stoked. he's stoked. Dean, put it there, buddy. Oh, mate. Mate, mate. that was insane. Oh. <laughs> Look, mate, you're running the same tyre as I am. You've got the Wrangler um, MTRs on. What do, you what do you think about those? There's a lot of technology that make those tyres work the way they do. Because as you were coming up that hill, there was mud flicking everywhere, and obviously you, you didn't struggle with traction one little bit. Yeah, mate, it's a beautiful deep tread, um, and like the sidewall strength from that, uh, that Kevlar uh, layer that's in it uh, makes these absolutely phenomenal. And to have an office like this for a little while, absolutely perfect. That's what makes better tyres, mate. Getting guys like you out here and testing in these conditions. Talk about testing conditions, mate. I mean, three-wheel drive, luckily, the tyres are going to help me out of here because I reckon I'm going to need every little bit of help I can get. So let's get into it because we're not done just yet. Beautiful. Just point it up and go. Yeah, that's, a, that's good advice. Sure enough, there's plenty of challenges left on this track and it's taken a lot of effort to get Sui through. As for the rest of the convoy, well, they're working pretty hard too. There's so much fun to be had on this track and soon we're stuck right into the mud, ruts and climbs as we make our way towards the finish. Now, there's actually a pretty spectacular waterfall at the end of this track, but the last bridge to the falls is actually blocked off with fallen trees, so we'll have to save that one for next time. With that in mind, I reckon it's high time we find a local watering hole of a different kind. So what do you reckon, mate? West Coast of Tassie gets a big tick. Oh, absolutely, mate. There's been some insane tracks and cracking views, and uh, I reckon the boys have had just as much fun as I have, but I think I've put a lot of uh, mud in the D-Max, I reckon. What about you, Kaido? What do you think, mate? Mate, I've absolutely loved Tassie. It's been awesome. Uh, the views are just bloody spectacular around here and uh, the mud's been great fun. And I was slipping up the start there, you know, but today I've really brought it back and uh, yeah, I've had an awesome day. Mate, that rig of yours sounds like an absolute beast. It's perfect for those sort of tracks, I think. What about you, Rob? Speaking of um, someone who's not afraid to jump on the loud pedal, you've um, eaten this track up today. Oh, sure, mate. It's been unreal. Tassie, first time forward driving down in Tassie and it's ticked every single box. It's Jew Dog. Well, you've just been stew dog, mate. Well, that's what I do, mate. That's what I do. But, you know, love, love coming back here, but 
still looking forward to getting over back over the east coast where it's nice and sunny anyway. Yeah, roger that. And Dean, mate, holy heck, you've had some good drives under your belt. Yeah, mate, it's uh, it's all been very, very much fun. I'm loving the west coast of Tassie, and uh, I think it's a perfect spot to be testing out these Wranglers. Yeah, you're not wrong, Dino. Look, I reckon this track's just about done, but I do know of a nice little pub we could pro probably go into and maybe even camp out the back. What do you reckon, boys? You keen? You read my mind, mate. And considering you did most of this track in three-wheel drive, I reckon I owe you a beer, eh? There you go. That was that was easy. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in now, mate. Let's get down there and um, go check it out, eh? Sounds good, mate. Just down the road, we're pulled up in the little town of Rosebury. Not a bad backdrop for a country pub. What do you reckon? What an absolute, absolute cracker. Oh, this trip has been... It had, it's had everything. Yep. I mean, we've done... Every single colour of mud. Yeah. I've got most of it on me still. Is you, you less so, mate. Would you... Inside the 80, though, is uh, another story. Yeah. It's a war zone in there. And Somehow the I've got a well. boot print up on the, on the... Don't even ask. <laughs> right up in the dash. What happens in there, mate? I've oh, got I recovery straps all muddy sitting on the front seat. I mean, three-wheel drive. That is the hallmark of an epic trip, in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. And tell you what, I was frothing driving the D-Max, too. I, know, I don't mate. think Graham will be stoked with me with the condition of... What you've done inside that canopy of here is a brand new canopy, mate. Yeah, yeah. I tried to keep it clean, but sorry, Graham. <laughs> a couple of little surprises. Anyway, the west coast of Tasmania, I'll tell you what, an amazing place. And you've got to get down. Do yourself a favour, get down to the west coast of Tassie. They call it the Wild West for a very good reason. It is super wild from the coastline, the Arthur Pyman region. It's one of the most remote places in Australia. Some of the best camping, some of the best tracks. This place has absolutely everything. Said it all, mate. You'll be back? Yeah, oh, definitely. Big mate, time. I've actually marked a couple of spots that I'm going to check out next time because this place is so awesome, mate. Cheers to that. Cheers, mate. Let's go join the boys for a couple of beers. What do you reckon? Sounds good. Stick around, folks, because coming up next, you're going to get a sneak peek into our next Tassie adventure. But first, a little bit on some of the gear we use and rely on to make these trips happen. Well, Jocko, mate, I've got to say, that's been an absolute cracker, ripper absolute of a trip, cracker. hasn't it? I'll tell you what, and this is the part of the trip where we want to talk about a couple of the products that have really helped us along the way. And one product in particular, mate, and mainly to give guidance to you, I've been on the GME a fair bit, just mm -hmm. communications is an essential thing. You come down to Tasmania, you've got a big convoy of vehicles, communication is the essence. You know, there's a lot of bog holes and a lot of ones that were really deep, you can just warn other vehicles to take the right line, left line, and yeah. in my case, just don't take my line. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, they really help. So the UHF I'm running in Sooty, and all my vehicles, in fact, is the XRS from GME. I'm also running a, a range of five watt handhelds, and I reckon a handheld out of the vehicle is so great for spotting people through. Definitely. It's just a must have bit of kit. Definitely, I reckon also being a lead vehicle as well, it's important to have something reliable. The other thing I'm actually really enjoying in the new canopy is that Clearview drop down slide. The drop down slide, yeah. how good are they, mate? I don't have one of them in the highlight, so it's actually pretty nice to pull the fridge out and drop it down, you can get in and- it Makes life so super easy. Super easy, it's well designed it? too. Like it just, everything works and lock it away. It's, Beautiful bit of kit. One of the big things I like about those Clearview drop down slides, mate, is even I can reach a beer down the bottom of the fridge. Yeah, definitely being a short bloke like yourself, mate. Exactly right, handy. mate. And speaking of beer, of course, to keep it cold, I found a new little product that just does exactly that. Now, it's got two main purposes. I'm talking about the Stanley with all pitchers. Now, you've used those double insulated little cups. Yep, we... I saw yours at one point. I know, <laughs> I saw that. That's why. <laughs> You, you use them for coffees in the morning and it keeps your coffee super warm for ages and also your beer in the evening keeps it really cold for ages. That double insulated technology in the wall of those cups is just where it's at I reckon. Well there you go, there's a few products that have helped us along this trip and I'll tell you what, they're cracking products and um, you should check them out, jump on Definitely. the websites and um, have a look at them but don't go anywhere just yet because right now we've got one of the favourite bits of the show yeah. that as voted by you guys, the outtakes. It's going to be a lot of silly stuff on this one I reckon. Oh, yeah, enjoy guys. Hold hands. <laughs> we shouldn't be driving that tree like that. <laughs> when you're snatching, I reckon, the key is just to, maybe the first one just not, <laughs> sorry, he just fell over, he just fell over. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's not good prop, is it? <laughs> That's not good. I reckon we best to walk this one, and when I say we walk it, probably draw a short straw. I don't know you're going to do. <laughs> Why don't we get back to the action and see <laughs> where we left off? I'm not there. Quick chat. <laughs> Sorry. C certainly, it's just different as well from like. <coughs> oh, <I'm joking. coughs> Our biscuit went down the wrong way. Good! Oh no! Oh, oh no! In the face! <laughs> in the face! Oh, in the face! 
Oh, what's wrong with this guy? Enough momentum to get up here, but also keep into it enough so it flicks mud out of the side grips of those tyres. As soon as you start to clear the tread of it, and those self-cleaning uh, properties. I'll tell you what, when you get up the top, holy heck, I'm off the track. I just, I got so excited. Right. Plenty of room to come back here, Copper Jim. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, a, he's such a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Copper. Yeah. Bye. Next time on Full Drive Action, we take on one of the hardest tracks in Tasmania. This bad boy is a thousand buck track. You are the recovery man. From full wheel drive swallowing mud to broken down vehicles, this will be one of the most challenging adventures we've ever undertaken. Don't miss our latest adventure, coming soon to YouTube.